terms of describing the project uh, by sharing with you that we have been for the past two years going through an environmental process under the laws of the state of California. And we've been looking at a series of alternatives to provide improved transportation service to the west side. Last winter, in March and April, we released our draft environmental impact report. It was available for comment for 60 days, and we got a lot of participation from the public, from agencies, from elected officials. With the conclusion of that comment period, we have now, for the past several months, been refining the project based on those comments. We have been answering the questions that were raised, and our plan is to circulate to our board of directors the final environmental impact report in January of 2010, just a few short months from now. Once that's done, uh, the board will look at the work that we've done and will either approve or project approve a project or not. What we're doing uh, tonight and over the next uh, this Wednesday and then next week uh, are three informational meetings to share an update with you and to answer questions. I do want to be clear, this isn't a public hearing in the legal sense, but rather an informational meeting. So with that, let me describe the project. If you look over on the right-hand side of the slide where it says Culver City, just above that you see a black dot. That black dot is the, the last station in the Expo Phase 1 project. It's light rail from downtown Los Angeles to Culver City. In the Phase 2 project, which starts right there at that Venice Robertson station, we looked at basically four different ways of getting light rail service to the west side. In our first alternative, we looked at going uh, straight west along what's labeled there the right of way alternative, uh, close to this neighborhood, of course. Uh, comes out uh, at Sepulveda Boulevard, uh, just a little bit south of Anawalt Lumber, then crosses over Pico, continuing west, uh, into Santa Monica, and then our first alternative went down Olympic Boulevard and ended at the old Sears Automotive Center at 4th and Colorado. Our second alternative did the same thing until we got into Santa Monica, but instead of going down Olympic at the request of the city of Santa Monica, we looked at going down the center of Colorado Boulevard, again ending at that Sears Automotive Center. Our third alternative avoided the use of the old Expo right-of-way that's near the neighborhood that we're in tonight, and instead went down Venice Boulevard to Sepulveda, turned north on Sepulveda, turned north on Sepulveda, and then continued west uh, into uh, Santa Monica. Alternative three went down Olympic, and alternative four went down Colorado. So those are the four alternatives that we looked at. Uh, part of the environmental process is you also look at doing nothing, for those of you that looked at the draft, we also studied what had happened uh, to traffic and congestion and other kinds of environmental impacts if no improvements were, were made in the, uh, in the transportation situation on the west side. Now what is light rail transit? Many of you who have been with us for the past two years know this by heart, but for folks who are new, I want to explain that light rail transit is a, a, a train that is electrically powered, each, each train uh, uh, is about 75 or 80 feet long, depending upon the kind that you buy. And you can string as many as three of them together here in Los Angeles, and three of them can carry up to 600 people. They're electrically powered. There's no uh, diesel or gasoline motor on them of any sort, and so they get all their power from overhead wires. Part of our project is to include uh, what we call a transit parkway. And that is that in addition to the light rail line itself, uh, we're doing, we're designing a bikeway along the alignment. Uh, we're also doing uh, pedestrian linkages around the stations, and uh, I'll show you where some of the stations are proposed to be, uh, so that folks can uh, walk or drive, in some cases park, but not all cases park at the stations. And we're doing landscaping along the right of way and at the stations, as well as public art within the stations. What do these things look like? This is a typical at-grade station. This would be similar to what is being uh, constructed on the Expo Phase 1 project, which is in construction today and is uh, slated to open in 2010, 2011. Uh, you can see there's a platform where you stand 
the, the tracks are just to the left as you look at them because that, of that yellow stripe. Uh, there's an overhead canopy that provides sun protection for the entire length of the platform, 270 feet. And about a third of that 270 feet has an additional sort of plexiglass uh, cover to provide rain protection for, for when it does rain here in Southern California. You can see there's uh, landscaping, there's benches and things like that around the stations. That's an at-grade station. An elevated station uh, would be where we have a bridge going over a street, a station uh, literally up in the air. Uh, you can see sort of going uh, straight across the middle of the picture, that kind of wavy line is the canopy, that sun protection that we're proposing as part of the project. And the bridges, uh, we try and make them architecturally pleasing and uh, that has been worked on very aggressively on the phase one project with an architectural design committee. Now the process itself, this environmental process, is a, essentially a six step process. And over the past two years, we have completed uh, the top four of those. And very quickly, uh, the notice of intent, notice of preparation, is just the official notification that an agency like Expo, the Expo Authority, is starting a project. We did that and we followed that with a series of scoping meetings, and some of you I know were at those uh, meetings, where we asked the public, we asked some of the agencies what they thought we should study, what were the environmental impacts they were concerned about, what were the alternatives that they and, and you felt ought to be looked at to improve transportation on the west side. We then did what's called a screening process, where you take all that information and boil it down to the ones that are most likely to meet the basic goal of the project that was established by our board of directors, and simply stated that was to provide improved transportation service from Culver City, the, terminal, the, the last station on phase one, to Santa Monica. Uh, we then went and did all of our environmental studies and published that draft environmental impact report a big voluminous document which uh, was on our, has been on our website and uh, around which we had those meetings and hearings last winter. And we're now in between the DEIR and the final environmental impact report where we are responding to the comments that we got uh, on the final environmental impact report. We're doing some additional studies that I'm going to review for you briefly. Uh, and we're refining the alternatives to try and respond wherever we can to those comments and make the project as good as we can. The final step in the process uh, would be the agency approval, and that's that January 2010 date that I mentioned a few moments ago, where we'll present the final environmental impact report to our board of directors, and under the California Environmental Quality Act, they will, it's then their duty if they choose to, to uh, accept the project, to certify and approve the project. And then the, the step after that would be to go into design and construction. And that schedule will be the last slide that I'll show you. When we did the draft environmental impact report last winter, I mentioned we compared those four alternatives, uh, two on the old right of way and two on uh, Sepulveda, one Olympic, one Colorado. And what we found is, uh, if you look on that column that's uh, second from the uh, left, 2030 phase two boardings, that's what we predict in the year 2030, the number of folks who would ride just the phase two portion of the project. So from uh, Santa Monica to the section between Santa Monica and Culver City, some of those folks would naturally go beyond to downtown, and some of the folks coming from downtown would continue to this area in Santa Monica. What we found is that all four of the alternatives were pretty darn close to one another. You can see the, uh, the, the low is uh, 35.8 and the high is 36.7. So all pretty much within the, the range of uh, margin of error for any uh, study. When we combine that with the phase one project, we get up between 62 and 64,000 boardings a day. So that's taking a lot of people off the roads, allowing them to ride transit, uh, and I guess leave more room on the roads for folks who can't get out of their cars. The travel time uh, from Los Angeles to Santa Monica is pretty close as well. Uh, the the uh, first alternative on the right-of-way and Olympic, it clocks in best at 44 minutes. The worst, then a 